Chapter 19 is our real estate math for brokers. Um, let me first of all start out by saying that the math section for brokers, you're probably only going to have about maybe five or six questions uh, on the entire test on math. The closing section that you're going to have probably somewhere between six and eight questions that will be coming out of that. So you're not going to be overwhelmed with math. What I'd like to do right now is go over those important topics uh, that I know that you need to focus on so that you can go back in, look, see what we have. I'll try to explain some of these, but it's more, more than anything, it's going to take repetition just going over and over these issues. Let's start out with the residual land value. Uh, that's always tested, and all you're trying to do right now is to determine the value of the land. What we're doing here is we're separating the building from the land. Uh, the example that's in the book if the capitalization rate of the building is 12% and the cost of construction is 400000 and the net operating income is 65000 how much is the residual land value? The net income represents both building and land. And so the, my suggestion is do a double IRV. Do one IRV, the I over RV for the building, and one I over RV for the land. And just kind of fill in the blanks and work backwards. Uh, it's a, it's a simple process to yield you the value of the land. Another problem that you're going to have that, that that's really not that difficult is the monthly rate of change. Remember we said that's your made over paid formula. All you're doing is taking your sales price minus your acquisition price, giving you your net profit. You're going to take that net profit and divide it by the acquisition price that should give you a percentage of the profit. You're going to take that percentage of profit and simply divide it by the number of months of ownership and that'll give you your monthly rate of change. You're going to have a, a sales comparison approach. Uh, the best thing that you can do with the comparable sales approach is just remember Robin Hood. You're only going to adjust the comparable properties. If the comparable is better than, take away. If the comparable is inferior, add to it. Robin Hood says, take from the rich, give to the poor. You'll also probably have a cost depreciation approach. And chances are all you're going to be doing is discovering or determining reproduction cost, subtracting away your accrued depreciation, giving you the depreciated value of the building only, then you add your land cost back into it. Now, probably the easiest way to do that is age life. In other words, every property has, an, has an, an economic life and it's going to have an effective age. And let me caution you, if, you're, if you see both the real age or the actual age and the effective age, you're looking for the effective age. Remember, the effective age is the amount that has depreciated and is gone. Whatever's left over is the value of the building. You'll also have an income capitalization approach. Remember, that's IRV. I over RV. The I stands for net operating income. You'll always be given two, and as long as you're given two, you can always find that third. The gross rent multiplier is the same way. This is your Varum formula, V over RM, value rent multiplier. Here's an easy way to remember the difference between the two. Focus in your test question, if you see the word capitalization rate or cap rate, cap rate IRV, multiplier Varum. Cap rate IRV, multiplier Varum. That should help you separate the two. Taxable income is also going to be another calculation that you're going to have to do. Remember, we're going to take our net operating income, add our reserves back into it. We have two, two deductions interest on the mortgage, and cost recovery. Another word for cost recovery is depreciation. And remember that depreciation is calculated two ways. If it's residential, you can recover the cost of the building over 27 and a half years. If it's non-residential, you can do it over 39 years. And remember, it's, you're recovering the cost of the building only. When you get to your closing section, uh, there's going to be a, a test question I know that's going to be uh, dealing with your documentary stamps and your intangible tax. Just remember that there's going to be a documentary stamp on the deed. It's based on the purchase price. It's 70 cents for every unit of $100. And if you have any fractions, you have to round that up. 
Let me give you an example. If the purchase price is $78,225, when you divide that by 100, you got a .25 in your calculator. You got to pull that out and now round it up to the next nearest number, next nearest 100. The intangible tax is on the mortgage, and that's new money created at closing. That's two mills, .002 times all new money. And then the last thing is the documentary stamps on the promissory note. The documentary stamps on the promissory note is 35 cents for every unit of $100. Any fraction, you've got to round up. And again, that's on both new and assumed debt at closing. And remember our prorations, when, we, when you hit the proration area, that a proration is going to be based on either the 365-day method or the 360 method. More than likely, if they don't tell you, it'll be the 365 method. If it's 365-day method, that means that every month has the number of days that it's supposed to have in it. January 31, February 28, March 31, and so on. If it's the 360-day method, then each month will have 30 days only in it. And you'll have to calculate it from there. So determine how many which, which method are you using. Secondly, determine who the day of closing belongs to. Remember, draw that line, that timeline. The seller owns the first part, the buyer owns the second part. Put the day of closing. If an item or a proration is paid up front, you're looking for the back side of the timeline. If that item is paid at the end of the year, such as taxes, you're looking for the front side. It's always one amount of money that one person owes to the other. It'll be a debit to one and a credit to the other. And those will be your prorations. And that's all I have on chapter 19. Uh, let me suggest that uh, uh, as part of this course, we sent to you or I sent to you um, a little um, a sheet or a couple of sheets on the closing statement. That was what basically we're looking for on your closing statement. So if you'll make sure that you review that, I think all is going to be well on that. Uh, the math is not going to be that difficult. Uh, you're probably going to get the majority of your math uh, anyway. It'll be that simplistic. I hate to say it's fifth grade math, but it, it's not that difficult at all. And that's all I have for chapter 19. I want to review one more time with you to make sure you understand what math problems that you're going to have. You're going to have the residual land value calculation, the monthly rate of change calculation, the sales comparison approach, the cost depreciation approach, the income approach. You'll have to know how to calculate the gross rent multiplier. You'll need to know how to calculate taxable income. You'll have to know how to do a depreciation or a cost recovery problem. And then you'll have to know how to do all of your tax calculations, your uh, closing taxes. And that's all I have for chapter 19.